Hey, uh, good morning and good afternoon and good evening, everyone. My name is Anand Jengren. I'm in charge of data and analytics at uh, Apigee. And today, I'm going to spend maybe about 40 minutes walking you through some slightly provocative positions that uh, I have built up around data. And I kind of built some of them up while I was at IBM as a CTO for data there. But as I have moved to Apigee, I've realized that there is a fundamental transformation that's taking place. And I want to actually talk about that transformation and how it reflects and should inform the big data community. You can follow me on Twitter, and, and I blog in two places. Uh, I blog uh, around Apigee-related activities in the first uh, blog and things that are either in general on the big data space or cloud space in the second blog. In addition, I want to make sure that all of you uh, do actively participate in the API community. A, a fantastic group has been set up in Google Groups called API Craft. And there's a lot of discussion that goes on by both the people who are well-versed in the art of APIs, as well as uh, people who are just beginning on that API journey. And it's a completely vendor-neutral uh, group where people ask questions and give answers and help everyone uh, embark upon this very important API journey. Of course, this uh, particular webinar and every other webinar are available on, on YouTube.com's uh, Apigee channel, and uh, where you'll find a lot of topics around APIs and, and data and analytics and developers and others. Uh, presented by, uh, by us and our customers uh, around APIs. We're also starting a uh, new IRC channel that has some activity, and the IRC channel is available by the same name, API Craft, on Freenode. So today, in the next 40 minutes, I'm going to talk about uh, three topics. One is, of course, you cannot take a step outside and not be hit by the big data, this or that. Every company, VMware acquires a big data company, IBM acquires a big data company, big data this, big data that. So there's a lot of big data discussion. But what, I've, what I strongly feel is that the big data discussion has started to focus on the wrong things. To a degree, it is because of the extreme geekiness of some of the participants, and, and the focus has tended towards bigness and, and technology, and I think that both of those focus are, are misplaced. And today I'll talk a bit about the focus should be either below the technology or above the technology, but not in the technology by itself. Second is there is a fundamental change that's happening uh, because of APIs, and we believe that because of that, big data needs to really focus on the right new thing, which is different than where it has actually focused itself on and in particular around data stitching from disparate data sources. So data and the flow of the data becomes far more important than the bigness of the data and all other things that uh, we have talked about or the big data community has talked about in the past. And if you buy these two assertions that, that, uh, that I'm making, then that naturally leads us to the third assertion, which is that data becomes the new currency. And if data becomes the new currency, then this world of API needs to have data as a first-class citizen. And I'll talk to you about what are the kinds of trends that we are seeing and the pros and cons of different approaches out there. OK, so let's go on. First, let's talk a bit about why I believe that big data is focused on the wrong things. And in fact, I first talked about it at a Hadoop summit last year while I was still at IBM. But my belief in it has only further strengthened. So if you look at it, what is big data all about? It's about taking technology, taking the data, and providing business value around uh, so-called big data. But if you look at the amount of ink that is spent on discussing big data, it's all focused on the middle box. It's all focused on, oh, is Cassandra the right thing, or is Edgebase the right thing, or, or what to do with Hadoop, or how to deploy it, or what are the kinds of uh, information and unstructured data that you are dealing with and everything else, and whether whether uh, we can really work this in an elastic environment on EC2, and what are the assembly of technologies that we can bring together and everything else. So the, the discussion in big data has been dominated by 
so-called what I would call alpha geekiness around uh, the technology uh, details and nuances. And you actually fundamentally cannot get two technologists to more or less agree on what's the right approach because in the end, the technologists, uh, including me, for example, have always tend to gravitate towards certain particular flavor and we tend to fall in love with that particular flavor. But what is missing in that dialogue really is that, that the real gold is the data and the real value is the business value. So what I think the shift that the big data community needs to happen is to view technology as a means as opposed to the end and view data as the primary value, primary, uh, primary thing that an enterprise owns or gets to deliver business value. And, and this is still not happening because we are still having extremely technology-centric conferences and presentations and everything else. The second thing, and I, I again talked about it at the Hadoop Summit last year, is that I think that by calling this community the big data community, we have done ourselves a disfavor. We have tended to emphasize the bigness, the macho-ness, the geekiness, the petabytes are really important, the terabytes don't matter anymore. And I think that has tended to put the focus of this overall approach into things that many, many, many enterprises cannot even grok. To think about petabytes for an enterprise is extremely difficult. To think about whether they're going to uh, deploy edge-based 0.91 versus 0.92 or whatever else it is, all of those are really extreme geekification of the dialogue. Really, what's more important is not the bigness of the data, the matchiness of the data. It's really the depth of insight. And I think as a community, we have tended to focus on the bottom right, whereas we really have to focus on the top left if you get this particular two-dimensional structure. So if the top left is the right thing and the bottom right is not the right thing, what does it mean for us? I will tell you about one more trend that's really happening that will further shift us away from the uh, bottom right. So if you look at enterprises uh, a few years back, even a lot of the enterprises today, the data that they collect is collected when people interact with their systems, whether they interact with their physical store, whether they interact with their, their web pages or whatever it is, the data that an enterprise collects is the data that happens by either partners or customers interacting with the systems that are produced by the enterprise. But if you look at today, this whole envelope around the enterprise has expanded by one or two degrees. What has happened, of course, is that these APIs have come about and apps have come about, and as a result, the people are interacting with the apps that may or may not be written by the enterprise. And it is these apps then that actually inform the enterprise what the uh, end consumer or customer behavior is. And therefore, the customer has kind of shifted one step away from direct interaction with the enterprise. But if you look at other things like social network and partners and business networks and others, all of them are pointing to the fact that the enterprise is no longer in control of collecting the data that it needs to collect in order to actually inform and make accurate business decisions. So this shifting to the edge, I have actually talked about this in the past, this shifting of the customers to the edge of the enterprise or beyond the edge has a fundamental implication with respect to this overall big data dialogue. And what I feel is that the big data dialogue needs to shift from, again, the bigness to the broadness or the breadth, it is really the, the number of data sources that become far more important than the sheer volume associated with any one particular data source. So in the old world, circa 2005, an enterprise may deal with five or six or seven primary data sources, their, their point of sales data source, their supplies data source, their customer records, their, uh, their warehousing records and whatever else. It is five or six or seven primary data sources that would then be fed into the enterprise warehouse and then from there business decisions could be made because these data sources 
actually reflected all the interesting things that were happening with respect to the enterprise. But in today's world, when the, when the edge has shifted out, the same data sources are no longer the only data sources. And in fact, I strongly believe that over time, they will not be the most important data sources. And you'll get a lot more data sources that are generating signal and other customer interactions around the edges. And in fact, what you find there is that these will be much smaller data sources. These will be data sources where you'll have a customer's interaction spread across many more uh, points as opposed to having a very few large points. And therefore, the dialogue has to shift from being deep and big on the left to being broad and, and pervasive on the right. The second thing, of course, is that whenever you have something big, whenever you collect a lot, you collect a lot of signal, but you collect a lot of noise. And in fact, a lot of the big data approaches to date have been about extracting the signal from the noise around those few large data sources. But suddenly, if the world has shifted to the right, you have to really focus on extracting the signal from the noise on hundreds or thousands of data sources, not just a few large data sources. The size of the data doesn't matter. It is how many data sources that you have to collect and stitch together in order to really extract the signal. And therefore, I really believe we all very consistently believe that the big data dialogue has to become a broad data stitching dialogue where the, the digital footprints of a customer behavior or a partner behavior are spread across multiple sources that are not necessarily in control by the enterprise and that they all need to be stitched together because if they are not stitched together, then the amount of signal that you'll get out of any one source is not going to be sufficient. It only when stitched together does the signal rise above the noise. So if you believe this, uh, this transformation that's taking place, the enterprise has to deal with the enterprise data sources, the syndicated data sources, and external data sources. And it needs to think through what is the mechanism by which all of this data can be brought together and stitched together. In Web 1.0, it was about crawling. Web 2.0 was all about how we can do fancy web pages and, and Ajax and everything else. But I think that Web 3.0 will be around APIs and data and how data can actually be brought together and, and, and accessed. But fundamentally, if an enterprise needs to actually be responsive and make critical business decisions, it has to understand the digital footprints across many, 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 many more data sources than it typically has in the past. And therefore, now it has to think through access and control, or, or does it push analytics to the data, or does it push data to the analytics? And others, all of those decisions were not significant in the world of the enterprise where bringing data to a centralized big data repository, whether it was warehouse or some of the new techniques, would have worked extremely well. So, so if we kind of are able to shift our dialogue away from few data sources and bigness of those data sources, then what are the right things that we need to do? As I said, we need to think about broad data. It's now about accessing data that others collect, not just the data that you collect. It's about the variety of the data, because now you're dealing with, instead of dealing with seven sources, you're dealing with 700 sources, and each of them has different shape and form. It's about striking deals in order to get access to the data. It's very different than blue-collar blue salespeople who have come to you and sold you syndicated data or your own enterprise, different departments in which you can twist arms and get access to the data. It's about something very different. It's about respecting the APIs that people will have around the data that these other third parties are sitting on top of. It's about data stitching, as I talked about. And as always, it's about the depth of the analysis as opposed to the, the depth of the data. It's not about trawling. It's not about bigness. Okay, so I think that what we need to do is to get our big data community to shift from talking about technology and bigness to talking about teaching and, and breadth 
and about being able to work with data sources that are no longer in enterprise control. Because fundamentally, with this API revolution, the, the edge of the enterprise is expanding, and uh, you have to be able to collect all of that. So at this point in time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift to kind of part two of, of uh, this particular talk, that is building upon the fact that this data which is at the edge becomes fundamentally important and really enterprises that will succeed are enterprises that get a handle on the data that either they own or they can get to okay and if you believe that then we have got to understand in what way shape or form will this data be exposed how would people be able to consume and interact with other people's data and I think that there is a whole revolution that's going to go on in this world of data APIs because of now the data are no longer in control of something, uh, something large centralized body. So that leads us to a natural question as to what kind of data APIs will be prevalent. So if I'm sitting on top of the data and if somebody else values the data, then I have to understand that apps that will consume the data will monetize the data in a certain way and I have to figure out how to actually get some part of that particular uh, revenue. I have got to make data consumption extremely easy. I have got to be able to collect data that's at the edge of the enterprise. The second shift that I want, want all of us to do is to have our API dialogue shift from what I call the transactional APIs, which is do this, buy this, send a message, etc., etc., to really a data dialogue, because the future is all going to be around this easy consumption and flow and interactions of data. And I actually call this as, and, and Sam Ramji, who many of you have met, Sam and I kind of came up with this kind of thought process, that there will be this, the transactional APIs and the data APIs. And today the world in discussion of APIs is dominated by the transactional APIs. But the tomorrow's discussion will be balanced and over time it will be even more centered around mm, data. And these two kind of form the yin and the yang of the uh, world of the APIs. And what we want to do is to increase the dialogue around the structure and the shape and the formulations of the data APIs. Every enterprise, even if they are focused on, on conducting business, which all of them are, has to realize that sometimes they have to give information away in order to actually attract business to the enterprise. And, and Sam Ramsey came up with this wonderful term called information halo. Information halo by itself is not necessarily monetizable, but information halo attracts people to, by, by publishing data, you attract people to the core of the business. So in effect, there are these two things that are happening. There are people who are sitting on top of the data where data is the business. And then there are people who are going to give data away in order to attract more, in, more uh, transactions to the core of the business. And you can, you can read more about it in uh, Sam's talk, which is also available on the YouTube channel. But in both of those scenarios, what really happens is that data becomes the center or becomes a very, very important part of the API dialogue. So what we strongly believe is that in many cases, enterprises should take the data APIs extremely seriously. They should give data out as and when needed if it attracts business to their core enterprise. They should give visibility and they should do that to both internally as well as to developers and, and external people for those enterprises that want to monetize on transactional APIs. And then for those enterprises for whom data is the core business, of course, they've got to think about data APIs. So to look at both of those sides, enterprises that want to monetize the transactional APIs need to talk, think about data, and enterprises for whom data is the core business need to think about data. Either way, data becomes 
very fundamental and central with respect to the API strategy. Now, what we are finding is that for enterprises that are, are trying to monetize around data, people are beginning to plant flags in different parts of the data domain. And I've kind of just listed this, and this could, number could be very well be 10x of that. But you'll find companies that are specializing in delivering real estate data and weather data and finance and local and, and, and demographics. But what we find is that each of these people who are producing the data, they are building it not by sitting on one data source, but by collecting disparate data sources. So if, if I'm publishing real estate data, I have probably collected 7, 10, 15, 20, 30 data sources that I've stitched together, cleansed and standardized, and then I'm delivering that. So natural question would be, how is it that these companies that are producing the data, what APIs are they using in order to collect the data? And a natural stitching technology could, could be the linked data approach, which of course is available at uh, linkdata.org, and many of you would be familiar with that as a, as a model for kind of data API. But if you look at it, in reality what happens is that the, these kind of data sources or data things that are provided either by enterprises creating information halo or by, by people who sold businesses data, they're collecting data sources, they are cleaning them and standardizing them, and then they are exposing them as uh, data APIs. If you go with that model, is it possible that they could use this linked data technique, which is, of course, as you know, kind of started off with, with TBL, talking about semantic web, and then has kind of morphed into some uh, good practical implementations can that technique be used by some of these data providers in order to actually stitch uh, the data together? And what we find is that, in general, linked data techniques don't actually work at the back end of the system because accessing individual data elements, which is where linked data techniques, for example, really uh, excel at, is not the model that these data providers use because what they really want is they want to crawl or bulk load or access data in large quantities and clean them and standardize them and then deliver them. Is it possible then if that linked data techniques cannot be used at the bottom, can they be used at the top? Can linked data become the de facto standard by which data are expressed and exposed out of the either the information halo or these uh, data companies? There also, I believe that at least in the beginning, linked data as the data API for domains is not likely to be very common. Because once somebody has produced this kind of data element, linked data really helps in kind of interlinking these kinds of different domains and others. And for now, at least, people are going to consume individual data domains as opposed to very, very tight linking and everything else. I think that linked data is going to play a, an important role but that thing is going to come sometime in the future because today the world is focused much more on how do you cleanse and standardize and unify the data and produce those data in those various domains. So if linked data is not necessarily the approach, then what is the approach by which data could be exposed as API? I'm slightly biased, but I think many, many people are that schema access to data APIs pattern after relational models is perhaps something that's really going, actually going to take off at the front end. What we have been observing is, uh, I've given three examples of data APIs. We have been observing three kinds of data access patterns. This is on the front end. There's a primary key lookup, which is get me to a specific uh, data element. There's kind of an imposed hierarchy-based lookup, so there, there are kind of a classes, and, and classes have certain kinds of hierarchy, and in effect, you're trying to traverse that particular hierarchy in order to get to the specific sets of data elements or a bulk of data elements. And then finally, there are these general purpose, what I call the, the rectangle lookups, which are typical relational lookups, which says give me some subset of rows and sub, sub, uh, some subset of columns from certain schema description of the data. But all of these techniques 
are techniques that are being built around single data sources as opposed to massively linked set of data sources. So there are many perspectives on data APIs. There are perspectives that uh, our own CTO, Greg Braille, talked about uh, sometime back on, on pragmatic REST for SQL developers. And then, of course, uh, Microsoft has been pushing this thing called the OData as a way of uh, restifying uh, the kind of the data uh, elements that I have been talking about. I gave a talk at Microsoft a few weeks back where I kind of talked through the OData community and I, and I said that, of course, we all fundamentally believe and know that no data is not an option. Data is the future and is the future of the API. No data is not the option. Is OData the answer? And of course, it was somewhat of a rhetorical question because the point that I made was that OData is, is exactly in the right direction, but there are certain things that it needs to do in order to really become the de facto or the de jure standard. So I feel that the restification of the data APIs is, is a fundamental imperative. The approach that Greg talked about or the approach that the OData people talked about are good starting points. They cannot be vendor specific. One of the things that I talked to Microsoft when I was there was that we've got to make sure that OData and Microsoft are not put in the same sentence, or at least OData technologies are not just available only in WFC and everything else, .NET and others. They have to be available to people who live and breathe other ecosystems. But the same thing is true for practical rest and others, that they cannot just be available only through Apigee and everything else. The fundamental point is that this data revolution is so fundamental that it cannot be associated with uh, any one vendor. The linked data model, even though I said that the linked data model is not necessarily central to the bottom and is not necessarily central to the top for some time, I think has got a, a very good characteristic that allows you to bring together cleansed and standardized and stitched data together. It doesn't help you stitch the data together. And therefore, as people become very comfortable with uh, these different data domains, linked data as a technique to absorb and, and bring data from other parts together will become extremely important. So, so my request to all of you is that as a community, we need to think about data APIs and its structures, get the best of the linked data and old data thoughts together, and then let's continue this dialogue on the API craft group where, where I've already I see that the the data community, O data community is beginning beginning to become active. And if the link data community can also become active, then this could be a wonderful forum so that we can actually transform the world with the new uh, world of data APIs. So just to summarize, I kind of talked about three things. I talked about the fact that the big data has focused a lot on the bigness and technology, which, which is wrong. The real focus should be on the data that is brought to the technology and the business value that is gotten out of it. Then I talked about the fact that the enterprise boundaries are, are disintegrating in as much as the fact that, that the customers and people whose values, whose opinions and other things matter have perhaps shifted one step or two steps away. And therefore, in order for you to actually, for enterprises to make the same kind of business decisions, now they've got to look at broad data as opposed to just big data. And I talked about what does it mean in order for us to be able to strike business deals and collect and stitch data together because we should be able to extract the signal from the noise because now the, 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 the so-called envelope or the edge of the enterprise has expanded significantly. And then finally, if you uh, believe in these, these two things, then data becomes very central to the evolution of the APIs, and the structure of the data APIs also becomes extremely important. And I, I kind of walked you through my opinions that, that some things pattern around the relational approach and, and pragmatic rest are going to be fundamentally important, and linked data techniques 
may not necessarily be that important at this stage, but will play a very, very important role going forward in the future. So at that point in time, I, I'm going to stop. And if there are questions, uh, we can take that on. So we have one question from Ramesh. Where does JSON figure in the data transfer protocol? Do we need anything other than JSON for data API? JSON is not data API. JSON is the, is the response payload. JSON is the response payload for what would be data API. So if you go back to this particular slide, the responses from these APIs could very well be JSON, but JSON itself is not the answer for what the structure and shape of these APIs would be. So I, the question is, do you see people actually using OData? Sure, Netflix and eBay expose OData APIs, but it looks a little dead. I wouldn't comment on, on uh, who is the person who said that uh, rumors of my death are, have been greatly exaggerated. There's somebody famous, uh, Americanism or Yankeeism out there, that I don't remember, but I'm sure somebody will comment on it. So I think that what I feel is that OData has the right genes in terms of starting from kind of a relational structure. It, it has certain constructs that don't necessarily gel well with, with uh, it's got certain, certain weird uh, constructs that you look at and you say, what was that? But in terms of genes, I think it has got exactly the right ones. And I think that the second part, of course, is that it is very Microsoft-y or Microsoft-centric, and therefore that is, that's definitely an issue. But I feel that over the course of next two or three years, data will become the currency. And whatever evolves at that time, you'll be able to trace back that to some genesis around practical rest and O data and everything else. Mark Twain, thank you, Phoenix. So we can continue this dialogue further on Google Craft, or on API Craft on, on Google Chrome. And I'm uh, sorry, uh, Tara, there, there's, there's another question. I'll, I'll, let me just finish the part that I was saying, and I'll come back to you, Tara, in a second. But uh, all, in, in addition, you'll find that, that we all, I all talk about uh, some of these issues in very public forum. So I'd appreciate if we could all get into this kind of dialogue because I may be slightly biased, but I don't think I'm more than just more than slightly biased that data and data APIs are the future of APIs. And, and the more we as a community can get our act together, the better off you'll be. Okay, tell us a question. I agree with your statement, but what do you think is the alternative? So what's going to happen is that if you go back to this world of where people are going to be start to expose data in some ad hoc ways, eventually you'll find this balkanization is going to lead to people not really being able to use the APIs. There'll be two real estate data providers and they'll provide it in very, very different ways and that will cause problems. So, so this is not sustainable that people don't have some uh, ad hoc or de facto de jure standards. That's not sustainable. And the thing is right now, the community as a whole has probably not felt the pain because data APIs have not become as central as the transactional APIs, et cetera, would be. And transactional APIs by nature are very enterprise centric. And therefore the pain has not been felt but based on some of the things that I talked about, I think the pain is going to be felt soon, and therefore we will all have to come together and make this happen. Okay, I'm not sure, Taras, I answered your question, but uh, why don't we just continue this dialogue if needed on API Craft or separately? Okay. Okay, hey, thank you very much, uh, everyone, and uh, would uh, appreciate uh, you guys jumping in and uh, making data as important, that will tickle me and make, uh, make me extremely happy. Thank you guys.